Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Happy New Year and I hope you're feeling very cosy in this somewhat quite windy um, New Year that we are, are having in January. Um, I've got a cup of tea in my favourite um, Bodleian Library mug which says silence please because I'm always trying to embody a little bit of quiet in my day-to-day um, -day life. And today I wanted to make a channel specifically about solo walking and loneliness. I think maybe particularly during this time of year, it can often be quite difficult for people. Um, maybe you have the sort of buzz of Christmas and then you're starting to you know, start the new year and the weather isn't exactly helping and we are sort of still in the midst of winter. I think there's definitely a lot more discussion about um, loneliness across generations, whether that be sort of the younger generation in a post-pandemic world, but also older generations as well. And because I'm so passionate about hiking and getting outdoors, I really have found through my own experience that specifically solar hiking can really help with um, at times of loneliness. Um, and sometimes this might be perceived as contradictory because you're walking alone and how does that necessarily help when you're feeling lonely but that's why I wanted to make this video today because I wanted to run over a couple of points um, that are primarily from anecdotal experience but that I feel that really demonstrate why solo hiking can be really beneficial if you're um, feeling lonely and why it, it doesn't um, doesn't necessarily exacerbate it and can actually be sort of quite freeing. So I just wanted to preface this by um, mentioning that everybody's lived experience will affect how safe they feel in a particular area um, and I think that's really um, worth bearing in mind when you're out and about and taking those usual precautions of letting someone know when you are where you're alone and and going to a place where you do feel safe um is of course important when you are um solo hiking whether that be sort of closer to home or perhaps you've um ventured further afield so i wanted to start talking about this um by beginning with my own experience and how i came to solo hiking and how that sort of woven within themes of loneliness and I think predominantly it's it started perhaps during the pandemic where it was a real um, duration of time which made me sort of consider what I really wanted to do and realising that because I couldn't necessarily get out into the hills and and um, go walking um, it was it was a sort of a catalyst to demonstrate that was what I really wanted to do and I at this time had started watching other YouTubers who were talking about getting outside and I also was reading a, a walking magazine that um, a lady within um, who had like submitted her um, walk that she'd done had said she didn't have anybody to walk with and so she decided to go by herself and the simplicity of that um, blew me away really. I hadn't walked by myself before um, and I kind of thought yeah and a bit of a disclaimer here I am someone who by choice spends quite a lot of time by themselves um, just because I find that's a better way to recharge and I appreciate not everybody has that disposition but although I'd spent a lot of time by myself maybe like sort of living in London and you know going about the city I hadn't actually walked by myself and although I'd done sort of different hiking trips um, maybe with a partner or family but I hadn't actually done it by myself and this really kind of got the cogs turning a little bit and I too realised that I had found myself in the situation of you know whether or not I had someone to walk with or whether you could sort of time it up or whether in a way I sort of wanted to to I guess sort of do it by myself and kind of carve my own um way a bit really and I think there are times where I think um you know oh, it, oh maybe it would be nice to go somewhere but I've actually found um with someone I mean I mean nice to go somewhere with someone but actually sometimes I found once I've gone out there and I've been by myself I'm actually really grateful that I didn't and that I had done it by myself and there's a couple of reasons that I'll go into why I find it 
really reduces that feeling of um, loneliness or perhaps maybe the sort of indecision of whether it's, um, you know, a good idea to go by yourself. Um, so I took a course at Glenmore Lodge um, to do some navigation because I feel like although I had done scouts and a little bit of DV bronze, I, I hadn't really um, done enough navigation by myself to feel confident. So I took, um, I think it was like a three or a five day course, um, but there are courses out there that are shorter and closer to home, um, maybe just a day. Um, but I have always wanted to go to Scotland and um, Glenmore Lodge is based in the Cairngorms, which is a beautiful part of the world. So once I had done that course, I definitely felt more confident. And my first solo hiking trip was December of 2021. And I went to the North Yorkshire Moors, in, um, which was would have been in winter. Um, and I stayed in this sort of little Airbnb, again, sort of living in London uh, when I go um, out to the hills I tend to have to stay overnight um, so that was my first endeavour and I was quite nervous I think um, just because it was something that I hadn't do done before but I made sure my walks were really doable I really didn't take on too much um, and because the daylight was reduced I was making sure that I wanted to get back well within um, the the daylight sort of disappearing. And this was before the apps had really taken off as well. Um, so I was sort of doing it manually by hand. So I wanted to buffer in extra time, the sort of timings of sort of working it out manually rather than using an app to calculate it. So it did it did mean that I was sort of adding, adding in extra buffering time. And I think from that point onwards, I've then gone on quite a few solo trips around Derbyshire and the Peak District. I went to, I've been to North Wales in um, uh, Erri. Uh, I've also um, been to the Lake District. So I've I've done a lot of like predominantly England and Wales based solo trips. One of the questions that I get if I mention that I go walking alone is why. Um, and I think really this started. Um, in the in the pandemic realizing that I didn't necessarily have people to go with walking all the time and I did want to go as often as I possibly could and so really out of a place of practicality which I think at first had there was a slight feeling of loneliness within that but then actually once I started doing it and getting out there that really melted away and it isn't something that I regularly consider and and actually I really enjoy going by myself and it gives me a lot of time to think and um, be mindful in a way that I often don't experience when I'm walking with other people. So um, I'm going to talk about some of the reasons um, why I think solo hiking specifically is um, really good for navigating times of loneliness. So the first reason is I think one that most people are familiar with, um, just the principle of getting outdoors and exercising will do um, beneficial things for your mental health. And whether that's just regularly every day or taking the time to go on bigger excursions um, to places where you want to hike, um, whether that be in a national park or a forest, um, but I think really the solo hiking aspect comes into the second point that I wanted to mention, which the planning and navigating is a really mindful task and one that you have to be really present for. And because because you're just doing it yourself. So when you're sort of planning the route and going out there, um, this can really require your whole attention. And whereas when you were walking with someone else, you might be conferring or double checking, but actually when you're sort of doing it by yourself, you're making those decisions. And that I find is really all encompassing and something that I really enjoy. Um, and wanted to mention that when I go walking by myself, I don't have any music on or any um, podcasts or anything like that. And um, I do when I'm walking around London because it's really loud. Um, but when I'm in the countryside, I actually don't need it. Um, because I'm sort of so focused on what I'm doing and that I really enjoy. And as a part of solo hiking that 
I think I didn't really realise that I could be in long periods of time by myself in complete silence until I started um, walking or solo hiking. The next reason I think that solo hiking can help with loneliness is it really allows a deep appreciation of nature when you're out walking. Um, I recently read two books last year, which I would highly recommend, um, both written by some incredible women. And there's Gwen Moffat's Space Below My Feet and also um, The Living Mountain by Nan Shepherd. And both of these incredible women speak quite extensively about how they like walking or climbing by themselves, because often it takes quite a specific criteria to be an ideal walking companion or climbing companion. Um, for Nan Shepherd, that's someone who's quieter and she really doesn't like uh, someone who is kind of quite chatty because she's unable to focus on the surrounding and, and be at one with nature. So I think, you know, sometimes when you are going walking or hiking with people, it's great because you can sort of, you know, get the buzz and the energy. But actually, when you're by yourself, you can really sort of stop to look at things that you want to look at. Um, one of the things I love to do is take a flask of tea and sort of just sit and kind of ponder and look at the beautiful view without maybe feeling rushed or someone who was maybe a little bit cold, who wasn't prepared. So actually those being on your own time, I think, is really um, rewarding as well as, um, you know, obviously being with other people. But I do think you're focusing on the landscape in a way um, that is free of any distraction because you're just sort of there by yourself and um, enjoying it. So I think it's, I guess it's sort of tricky to articulate and this might sound a slightly contrived, but I guess one of the things that I also find walking solo is that nature, excluding any people, but nature primarily is a very, unjudgmental space. Nature isn't judging you for being there alone. Uh, nature is often operating on its own as well in, uh, in the amazing landscapes that we find ourselves in. So I think there's a nice synergy there and an alignment of both solar hiking and um, nature. So I think um, loneliness can also be exacerbated by the way we perceive people to receive our loneliness. So you know, perhaps if we're out and about and, you know, being alone and how people might sort of respond to that. But particularly in the walking and hiking community, a lot of people do hike and walk and climb by themselves. Um, and this is something that's quite widely recognised and supported. And, you know, both sort of uh, Nan Shepherd, Gwen Moffat and also other walking greats such as Alfred uh, Wainwright have also... Um, sort of solo walked and that's been really kind of empowering and freeing on on different levels and actually it's an activity that a lot of people do them by themselves so I do tend to see quite a lot of people out there um solo hiking and granted it does tend to be more uh, men than women but I'm definitely seeing more and more solo female hikers um getting out there and um, exploring the world for themselves so I would really encourage you if these are if I've touched on anything that perhaps might have been holding you back about sort of going out there or sort of um, exploring and, and hiking by yourself then um, I would really encourage you to do so and um, to sort of try it out in a in a safe and responsible way. My other really big tip um, for loneliness and um, sort of solo hiking is when you are, um, if you're traveling to a particular location to stay and then do some hiking, more of a holiday rather than staying at home, is to stay in a YHA. These are fantastic um, hostels which cater for multiple generations. They also do school groups, but they do um, individuals as well. And they're a really welcoming environment that a lot of people are by themselves. You can have a sort of single room or you can be in a shared room. But I think what I really like about them is this feeling of warmth and shared um, goals of people wanting to be there and wanting to be outside the ethos of the YHA I think is really important and 
funnily enough, the moments that I've felt loneliest have been maybe, you know, if I've gone away and I've stayed somewhere, it's actually been where I was staying because I've suddenly got all this like, wow, I've just had this great day. And then suddenly there's actually more of a come down if I'm staying somewhere overnight. Um, but the times that I've stayed in the youth hostels, I found um, to have a really great atmosphere. And I really haven't noticed that I was by myself at all because people are sort of in the area cooking um, or they also serve food as well. There's a there's a bar um, and it's constantly vibrant, sort of like people going in and out and wanting to um, share tips and routes and um, ideas about where to go. So that would be my big tip. Um, about if you're traveling somewhere they're also fairly um, low cost as well in a climate where a lot of private accommodation is getting extortionately expensive um, uh, and the YHA is great because it's also giving back to um, communities that really need access to the outdoors who maybe perhaps don't necessarily have that in their daily life so that would be my big tip um, if you are traveling and also wanting to solo hike, but then also wanting to sort of share that um, camaraderie uh, when you also come back uh, at night as well. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful and I do plan to make some other videos around this sort of topic. Um, also about uh, maybe some advice when you are hiking alone as well maybe going into some more depths about sort of specific things around you know what to do if you get into trouble or things like that um but i'd also got some more route videos coming uh, i was recently in the lake district and um, north wales as well um over the christmas and winter breaks so um that will be coming very soon and i wish you a happy and healthy 2024 and see you next time thank you bye